All right. Let's get started on lecture number 19. Uh, our last lecture, we talked about cocaine and um, generally about psychostimulants. This lecture, which is quite a bit shorter, will focus just on amphetamines. Much of what we talked about uh, in that previous lecture, uh, we'll revisit a little bit here. As a group, uh, these are structurally defined, a group of uh, drugs that produce a variety of effects on the central nervous system and autonomic nervous system. As we talked about before with cocaine, it's a sympathomimetic effect because they mimic the effects of the sympathetic nervous system actions. They also have indirect actions involving the presynaptic release of both dopamine and norepinephrine. And this is one of the significant differences in terms of uh, the effects of cocaine versus amphetamines. Cocaine exerts its primary effect on dopamine, whereas amphetamines have a significant effect on norepinephrine in addition to dopamine. And so as a result, the sympathomimetic response is much stronger because norepinephrine is the primary neurotransmitter in the sympathetic nervous system. So if we look at the structures of uh, dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine, and the amphetamines, you can see these structures are relatively similar. We have a phenyl group, an ethyl group, and an amine group. Um, and the structure of amphetamine versus methamphetamine is simply the addition of another methyl group um, here at the top structure. Methamphetamine is much more potent than amphetamine, which is one of the reasons why it has such a high abuse potential. So amphetamines have long been used to treat a variety of disorders. Um, for example, the uh, Japanese military used methamphetamine for their soldiers uh, back in uh, World War II, and I think before that as well. So amphetamine, which is Adderall, is currently used to treat uh, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, um, as well as uh, a few other things in adults, uh, particularly um, people who have sleep disorders, uh, sometimes will take, will be prescribed Adderall uh, to help with that, or as an adjunct treatment to the antidepressant. Adderall is a racemic mix of both dextrone level amphetamine, um, so it's less potent than dextroamphetamine, um, which is dexedrine. And so that dextroamphetamine or deamphetamine is the more potent half of the Adderall mixture. So these have historically been used for weight loss, and so that's the primary use for dexedrine, uh, as well as to fight fatigue. And then amphetamine is used, or Adderall is used, to treat it. Um, dexedrine is essentially speed, uh, is what uh, most people would refer to that as. And in fact, it's been used by truckers, in, by the military, lots of people to induce alertness and wakefulness. Uh, folks. So these exert virtually all of their action by causing the release of norepinephrine and dopamine from presynaptic storage vesicles. And so they actually cause a release of those uh, neurotransmitters. Rather, cocaine blocks the um, presynaptic transport. So the mesolimbic uh, system and nucleus accumbens are associated with the behavioral stimulation and motor activity. And so this is why in um, amphetamine users, you can get OCD-like behaviors. And these are stemming from stimulation of the basal ganglia. And so you get people who will do obsessive things uh, when they're will fixate and not move away from those activities. And in fact, um, with sort of longer term heavy methamphetamine use, there is um, a syndrome called Frankenstein um, syndrome. And this is when people start taking things apart. <clears throat> uh, they will take apart their DVD player, they'll take apart whatever they kind of have available in this very ritualized, obsessive, compulsive type behavior. So the pharmacological effects uh, follow from that release of dopamine from the presynaptic nerve terminals. We get an increased flight, flight, fright response that is dose related. The metabolites of amphetamines are detectable in urine for 48 hours. As mentioned in a previous lecture, 40% of the dose of methamphetamine is excreted unchanged. This is why chronic heavy methamphetamine users will recycle that urine in a variety of ways. Harmful effects from these drugs uh, follow from exaggerated doses and responses, including insomnia, restlessness, stereotype behaviors like I was just talking about, these purposelessness, purpose 
repetitive acts um, who are constantly doing the same thing um, and being unable. It's almost like they get stuck and can't unstick from a behavior. Uh, can get violent, paranoid, can have delusions. They'll also have anorexia. This will progressively deteriorate over time. Biggest problem with amphetamine users, in particular methamphetamine users, is the use goes on for days. Uh, most cocaine users will have a night, um, then they'll run out of drugs and money, or they'll just run out of drugs and they'll go to bed at some point. Um, methamphetamine users can go for days. Um, with so you can get um, amphetamine psychosis with paranoid ideation that can be persistent or will resolve uh, when the drug works. Quick summary of the sort of difference in the way cocaine is used and uh, with its properties. So uh, we get the characteristic triad of actions, local anesthetic, vasoconstriction, and psychostimulant. Uh, short half-life is a few minutes, and the use is more recreational. Um, we talk about the sort of weekend warrior cocaine user, goes out on the weekend, parties it up, goes back to work on Monday. Um, whereas with methamphetamine, which is associated with irreversible brain damage um, with relatively low use. Um, users typically use the drug continuously over 20 times a month, often three to four times per day, smoking, injecting, snorting. All of these are potential ways in which methamphetamine is used. So these have been shown to improve cognitive processing, speed, attention, concentration, and psychomotor performance at lower doses. Um, and that's one of the reasons why there is a vibrant trade of Adderall on college campuses, particularly around finals week, is to provide that sort of attention and concentration. Um, so that's what underlies their use to treat ADHD in adults and children. Uh, they can also be used as performance enhancers for athletes, although some fine motor coordination is lost. So you're probably not going to want to use amphetamines to go golf um, or you know, anything else that requires fine motor but it can act as a performance enhancer. But at high doses, of course, it's associated with anxiety, serious toxicity, over-focusing, so we go from uh, focused concentration to obsessive compulsive behavior and those ritualized behaviors we talked about. Uh, these drugs are prone to compulsive abuse. Physical dependence is easily induced in humans and in animals alike. Tolerance can develop quickly. Withdrawal can be associated with increased appetite, extensive sleeping, and depression. I had um, a friend of my mom's, uh, her son was home trying to get off of uh, meth, and I said, you know, feed him and let him sleep. Um, he's going to sleep a lot, and he's going to need to sleep for a long period of time to kind of recover, and then have to deal with that depression. Methamphetamine users also often have reduced working memory capacity, and there is evidence that the drug modafinil uh, which has low abuse potential, can be used to help treat those executive uh, function difficulties. I want to spend just a few minutes talking about methamphetamine, because this is the primary amphetamine of abuse in the United States, and really the world. It's also known as ice, speed, crank, crystal, tina. Uh, it's readily manufactured from available chemicals, uh, which include pseudoephedrine, which is why pseudoephedrine is now more difficult to get. You have to get it from a pharmacist, and you can only buy... Uh, it is a more potent form of amphetamine. Crystal methamphetamine is really the smokable form. It's actually heated and vaporized. Uh, it's absorbed rapidly when smoked, uh, which continues for four hours. The half-life of methamphetamine is 11 hours. And so uh, one dose of amphetamine is going to take uh, 55 hours, uh, up to 66 hours to um, be a process. So that's almost three full days. So keep that in mind. It's a long, long-term use drug that it is. It stays in your system for a very long time. And again, 40% of that is excreted unchanged. So important to you know, methamphetamine is very neurotoxic. Uh, acute use, there are a variety of toxicities, including strokes and psychosis. Can get behavioral and mental changes that can persist, leading to some speculation about long-term brain injury. In rodent studies, we see loss of both dopaminergic and 5-HT serotonergic neurons. 
And the rhesus monkey, this has been shown to persist for four years after use. In humans, we see about a six to 8% reduction in frontal and cortical uh, and basal ganglia and neural, neuronal density or neuronal content in methamphetamine abusers that are abstinent for 12 months. Um, and so there is certainly clear in vivo evidence for neuronal injury in abs and abstinent methamphetamine users. So what you can see from these graphs is reduced hippocampal volume, increased ventricular volume, so that's an increase in the um, fluidic space in the uh, brain, significant reductions in the cingulate gyrus and medial prefrontal cortex, and overall uh, volume. The physical toll of long-term use of methamphetamine. Um, smoking meth uh, certainly destroys the teeth enamel, that vasoconstriction, constriction, and long-term starvation results in dramatic damage to the body and looks, along with that sort of picking at skin we talked about with uh, cocaine users, that sleep deprivation can result in some serious psychosis. And so they have this belief or feeling that there's something crawling under their skin. And so they will pick at, cut at their skin um, to try to get at those things. So this is... Um, the same individuals after 10 years of meth use. Pretty bad drug. Another good example of that, you can see this guy on the right, he's one of those people that's been picking at his skin and scarred his skin uh, pretty dramatically. So uh, that's a summary of methamphetamine use. Uh, it has uh, a large reputation, particularly in the gay community, um, about uh, its sexual properties. In fact, if you're interested in uh, learning more about that, there's a great documentary called Chemsex uh, from the BBC, and that's actually what it's called. People will actually um, get together, um, use methamphetamine, engage in you know, large group activities, um, lots of unprotected sex. Um, again, that sexual risk-taking is pretty extreme with this type of drug. So other non-amphetamine stimulants include ephedrine, not very used today, um, and its primary effects were on uh, adrenaline. Um, methylphenidate, which is Ritalin, has a short half-life. It blocks the dopamine transporter at the presynaptic terminals and is used to treat ADHD. Uh, pseudoephedrine is primarily used um, as a decongestant. Um, so drugs like Sudafed and um, Mucinex, uh, if you buy it from the pharmacist, will include the pseudoephedrine. And then finally, modafinil, uh, and this is very different type of drug. Uh, its primary use is to treat narcolepsy. It's actually a drug called Provigil. Um, and so it can actually help uh, increase uh, alertness and awakeness in sleep deprived people and also uh, appears to fight uh, fatigue and depression patients. Uh, and as I said a moment ago, uh, in uh, recovering methamphetamine users, modafinil has been shown to improve uh, working memory and executive functions. So how do we treat stimulant dependency? Well, there are no pharmacological treatments. Um, a lot of people work with contracting, negative reinforcement, uh, and positive reinforcement. So pharmacological ideas are based on the mechanism of action. Again, metafinil has been shown to improve working memory, um, but not much uh, really has been shown to be that effective. Potentially antidepressant treatment might also be appropriate. Uh, one idea is to intercept the drug before it reaches the brain, so increasing metabolizing, metabolizing enzymes. Um, they are working on a vaccine for cocaine use, um, which is coupled to a recombinant cholera toxin um, to a greater or lesser extent. Basically, this is a, it's designed to generate drug-specific antibodies that will bind to either cocaine or amphetamines and prevent it from traveling to the brain. I think that's quite a ways off. Right now, we have to rely on abstinence and simply getting people um, to want to be sober and not want to use these drugs again. All right, well, that's our discussion of amphetamines. We'll be talking about um, psychedelic drugs in our next lecture.